So you read the title. By the end of this video, you're going to have this tic-tac-toe game made with Python and Pygame. The GitHub is in the link in the description and in the pinned comment, so if you want to download the code for yourself, you can. There are also two pastebin links in the description. One is for this boilerplate here because I'm too lazy to type it out, and the other is for the logic to check if we've won the game. So you can go ahead and copy and paste those into your code when you need to. With that being said, like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and let's get into the video. Happy Holidays and Happy New Year, by the way. Alright, so here we just have the boilerplate that I created, and hopefully you've pasted this into your script. If we go ahead and run this, we get this tic-tac-toe board with two colors that I chose out. And we also get a caption in the top left that says tic-tac-toe. Now, the first thing we need to do is check if we're pressing down a mouse button and put an X or an O in the correct position. And the first function we're going to create to do this is going to be the add XO function, which is going to add either an X or an O to the board list, depending on whose turn it is. And it's going to look at where we clicked, convert that to an index in the multidimensional list, and change the value of the list at that index to either X or O. So right above the while loop that I created in the boilerplate, we're going to say def add XO. And we're going to pass in three parameters because I don't want to use them as global variables. And they're going to be the board, the graphical version of the board, which stores lists of surfaces and rects, and to move, which stores whose turn it is to move right now. So the first thing we need to do in this function is get the current position of the mouse. So we're going to say pygame.mouse.getPause. And we're going to put this inside of a variable that we're going to call current pause. And now let's create our x and our y for our current position. And what I mean by this is since our current position returns an x and a y value stored in a tuple for where the mouse is, we need to convert it to a position in our list. And to do this, we're going to need to do some math. Now for the x position, we're going to say that the current position at the index 0, so the x value of the current position, because pygame.mouse.getPause returns a tuple. So the x position of that tuple is going to be the 0th element. So the 0th element of current pause, we're going to subtract 65 from that, because I found that subtracting 65 perfectly centered the x or the o in the correct position. And we're going to divide this by 835 and multiply it by 2 to scale it to our board. And because we want to subtract 65 from the x position first, we're actually going to have to put in brackets because that's how order of operations works. We're going to store this in a variable called converted x. And we're going to do the same thing with y. So if I press shift alt down arrow key in VS Code, we're going to duplicate this and we can change this to converted y make this one because we're talking about the y value of the current mouse position and remove the minus 65 offset because we don't need that on the y axis. So now let's check if the board at the current index is empty, then we should fill it with either x or o depending on whose turn it is to move. So we can do that in a simple if statement by saying if board at converted y and we're going to have to round this using the round function because by default converted y will return a decimal. So if board at the index converted y and converted x, once again we have to round this. So if board at those two indexes is not equal to o, and let's go ahead and duplicate this, we can say and the board at those two indexes is not equal to x. So if both of those conditions are met, then we should say the same thing is equal to to move. And now we have to revert to move to the next player. So if it's x, it becomes o, and if it's o, it becomes x. So if to move is equal to o, then to move is equal to x. And we should put this in quotations. Else to move is equal to O. All right, and now we can render the board. And to do this, we're going to call the render board function, which we obviously haven't created yet. 
So we're going to call it render board, and we're going to pass in three parameters, which are going to be the board, the X image, and the O image. And now above the add XO function, we can create the render board function. All right, so right here, let's say def render board. And we're going to pass in the same parameters as we did below, which are going to be board, X image, and O image. And now we're going to reference the graphical board as a global variable. So global graphical board. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through the board. And for every X or O in the board, we're going to add an X or an O to the graphical board in the same position. We're also going to add a rect for that X or O because we want to put it on the screen at a specific position. So to cycle through the board, we're going to create two for loops. The first one is going to say for I in range three because the length of the board is three and also for J in range three. So now we can say if board at the index I and J is equal to X, then what should we do? Well, we should create an X image. So let's say that. And we should also create a rect. And to do that, we're going to say graphical board at I and J and zero because we're referencing the surface. If we go up here and check graphical board, as you can see, it's a three dimensional list. So it has the rows and columns. And instead of just having X or O, it has another list which contains none and none. And just by default, it's none and none, but this is going to be changed to the X or O surface. And this is going to be changed to the X or O rect. A surface in Pygame is like an image and a rect is an object that tells Pygame a lot of information, including where to put the surface. So that's why we're using it. I hope that makes sense. All right, so back here, we're going to say the surface is going to be equal to X image. And the same thing if we copy this, we're going to do the same thing for the rect except replace it with rect. And this is going to be one because we're referencing the rect and the rect is going to be equal to X image dot get rect because in Pygame, this is how you put a rect on a surface. And we're gonna have to pass in the position we want the X to be at. So we're gonna say we want the center of the X to be at J times 300 plus 150 comma I times 300 plus 150. So we're referencing the row and the column that we're on, we're multiplying it by 300 and we're adding 150. This is basically just y equals mx plus b. So we're taking the current row or column, we're multiplying it by 300, and we're adding 150 in case it's zero. So if j was equal to zero, then zero times 300 is zero, and zero plus 150 is 150. So the x position would be 150. Now if j was one, one times 300 is equal to 300, and 300 plus 150 is equal to 450. So the X position would be 450. Here's a quick table showing all of the J values and the respective X values. All right, and now we can do the same thing with O. So elif board at I J is equal to O. Then we should do the same thing. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it here, except with O image. All right, and now that's the end of the render board function. Basically, what we did is we added everything we needed to the graphical board. Now we can go back into our add XO function and we can finish it off. And I actually mistyped X image and O image. They were actually capitalized when they were global variables. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the X or the O inside of graphical board on the screen. So we're going to say for I in range three and for J in range three again, because we're cycling through the multi-dimensional list, we're going to check if graphical board at I J zero. So the surface is not none. So if it contains something, then we're going to put it on the screen. So screen dot the same thing. Let's go ahead and copy it. And we're going to pass in the rect. So the same thing except for one. And we're going to finally return board and to move because we updated them. 
So that's the end of the add XO function. So now we can check if we've pressed the mouse button. And if we have, we're going to call the add XO function. So in our event loop, which is right here, the only thing we're doing so far is we're checking if we've quit the game. Now in Pygame, there are a lot of different events, one of them being pygame.quit, but another one is pygame.mousebuttondown. And we're going to go ahead and check for that here. So if event.type is equal to pygame.mousebuttondown, then what should we do? Well, we should call add XO. So we're going to say add XO, and we're going to pass in board, graphical board, and to move. And we're going to store the return value of add XO in board and to move. So essentially, by calling the add XO function, we're just changing the value of the board and to move. And we're doing this without using global variables. So now let's start checking if we have a winner. The first thing we're going to do to check if we have a winner is create a variable called game finished that stores whether or not we finish the game. And it's going to default to false. Now inside of our while loop, inside of if event.type equals mouse button down, we're going to say if we've finished the game, then we should clear the board. So we should revert everything back to its default state. And to do that, let's just go up here and copy everything we have. All right, so back here, let's go ahead and paste this and fix the indenting. And we're also going to have to change game finished to false again. And finally, we're going to say if X has won the game or O has won the game or it's a draw, game finish is true. And we're going to do that by saying if check win, which is a new function we're going to create, and we're going to have to pass in board for that, is not none, then game finished equals true. Finally, we're going to update the display by saying pygame.display.update. And now for the most boring part of the video, we're going to go through every case and check if we have a winner or the game ended in a draw. And it's so boring, in fact, that I've just left a pastebin link in the description. So you can go ahead and click that and copy and paste the code for checking if we have a winner. So I've copied it already, and I'll put it right here. And this huge function checks for every condition that results in a winner a loser and if we've drew. So first of all, we create a variable called winner and we store it as none. Then we check if we have a winner horizontally. We check if we have a winner vertically. We check if we have a diagonal winner like this and a diagonal winner like this. Finally, we return draw if all of the positions on the board are full and we have no winner. And if all of the positions on the board aren't full, then we return none. All right, now we have a finished game, but I realize that I made a typo while making this. So up here, we said x image twice, this should actually be o image. Sorry about that. Now let's go back down here. And now let's run our code. So once again, we have our board. And now if you click over here, we should get x and we do If you click here, we should get o and we do x o x. And I forgot to mention that in the check win function, it changes the color of the winning line to green to show that it's won the game. So if we click again, the whole board resets and we can do the same thing with O. So X, O, X, O, let's put X over here and O and the same thing happens. So now if we do a draw by saying like X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, as you can see, nothing happens. And if I click again, the board resets. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you liked it, consider liking, and if you really liked it, consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, happy holidays, happy new year, and have a good day.